This particular section of the Westminster Shorter Catechism looks at the law. We are currently examining the first four commandments and the teachings that are derived from these commandments. And these first four commandments tell us in the words of our Lord to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds. This is the first, the great commandment. We're now looking at the third commandment today. And the third commandment is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. There is a common misconception that this commandment relates only to the sin of being outwardly and vociferously sacrilegious or blasphemous in terms of our speech, how we use our language. And that is included. We are not to take God's name in vain. We are not to take the name of the Father, Son or Holy Ghost as a swear word. And sadly, there are those who do treat the word of God either as a swear word or in the most flippant way imaginable. And that is a breaking of this commandment. But this third commandment goes much deeper than this. It examines our hearts. It probes into our thoughts. It looks at our attitudes. It delves into how we treat holy things, especially the holy name of God. You see, if we worship God outwardly and have not a heart that's engaged in that, we use the name of God, but yet we're not mixing that name of God with true faith. We're not worshipping God in spirit and in truth. That too is a breaking of this commandment. And so while the first commandment tells us we're only to worship one God, while the second commandment says we're not to turn the one God into a graven image, the third commandment looks into our hearts, into our souls, how we worship God. These first four commandments very much relate to our worship, examines our heart as to how we conduct ourselves in the worshipping of him. And then the divines ask the question, what is required in the third commandment? The third commandment requires the holy and reverent use of God's names, titles, attributes, ordinances, word and works. All that relates to God, whether it is his name, but also his ordinance, the attendance at God's house, the ministry of God's word, preaching of God's word, how we handle the Bible individually, personally, how we read it, how we even treat the book. It is all included here. Everything that belongs to God should be treated with the utmost reverence. And then we come to the forbidden thing. The third commandment forbiddeth all profaning or abusing of anything whereby God maketh himself known. To not show reverence to that which belongs to God is to be profane. To abuse that which is God's. You see, this is God's territory, God's property. Whether it is his house, whether it is his people, whether it is his ordinance, it is his property. And we have to treat it as God's property. What is the reason annexed to the third commandment? The reason annexed to the third commandment is that however the breakers of this commandment may escape punishment from men, Yet the Lord our God will not suffer them to escape his righteous judgment. It is emphasised. The Lord will not hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Therefore, there will be judgment for those who treat God with contempt. What an awesome thing that is. John Flavel, one of the Puritan authors, made this comment on the third commandment. The first commandment, he said, hath respect to the object of worship. Forbidding us to worship any other God but God. The second respects the means of worship. Forbidding us to worship God by any other means than that he hath prescribed. But the third respects the manner of his worship. Forbidding all careless or profane use of his name. And commanding and holy reverence from us and all our solemn addresses to him. Or ordinary mention of his name. It requires the most awful and reverential frame of our hearts and all our approaches to God. May God give us such a spirit.